primary audience for this tutorial are users with little to no experience using Microsoft Excel. To make use of the information covered in this tutorial, users will need access to Microsoft Excel. This tutorial will address the following learning objectives. Users will be able to enter data into an Excel spreadsheet, change the look and feel of their spreadsheet, employ simple formulas, and prepare a spreadsheet for printing and display in programs such as PowerPoint. Let's begin by entering data into a spreadsheet. Here we see a blank Excel spreadsheet. Columns are labeled alphabetically and rows are labeled numerically. The individual cells of the spreadsheet can be described by the letter of the column and the number of the row, in this case, B4. Let's begin by labeling the columns. In this example, the column labels will be the months of the year. So I enter January. Next, I can enter the month February. Or, I can put the cursor in the lower right corner, left click and drag, to complete the rest of the months. Besides the months of the year, Excel can also autocomplete other series, such as days of the week. For instance, if I type in Monday, I can hold my cursor in the lower right corner and drag across to complete the rest of the days of the week. Now I'll move on to adding in the row labels. In my example, these will be household expense items. Later on in this tutorial, I'll be doing simple equations using these rows. One thing you may notice with this spreadsheet is that some of the names of the months get cut off, like September. One way to deal with this is to place the cursor between the J and the K until you get a horizontal line with two arrows. Then left click and drag to increase the width of the September column. This can then be done on other columns that are too narrow as well. Another way to deal with this is to left click on B and then drag across. This will highlight all the columns with months. Then if I hold the cursor between two of these and double click, it will minimize all the columns to the least amount of width required to properly display the values. Also, after highlighting the columns, I can place the cursor between any two columns, in this example between J and K, left click and drag, and this will make all of the columns the same width. Another issue is that my row headings actually bleed over into the next column. There's a couple ways to handle this. One is to widen column A. Alternatively, I can highlight column A, Hold the mouse over the highlighted area, right click, and select Format Cells. From here, I will select the Alignment tab and then click Wrap Text. Now I'll begin to enter in my monthly expense values and income. At this point, I could type in the values for February, or what I can do is to highlight all the values from January, put my cursor in the lower right corner, left click, and then drag across. This will autocomplete the entire spreadsheet with the values from January. Now let's look at changing the look and feel of my spreadsheet. The next thing we'll look at is the addition of grid lines to our spreadsheet. The light gray grid line seen here will not show up when printing. 
In order to have grid lines show up, I'll have to add them myself. The first step is to highlight the entire spreadsheet. Next, I'll hold the mouse over the highlighted area and hit right click. Go down to Format Cells and move over to the Border tab and begin to add in my grid lines. There are a number of options. For the outside grid lines, I will choose the heavy solid line. And for my interior grid lines, I will use the thin solid line. I can add in more grid lines to further differentiate the different parts of my spreadsheet. Another change I can make is to bold all of my row and column headers. To do this, I'm going to highlight all the cells that feature my row headers and click on the bold button at the top. I'll do the same for the column headers as well. I can also change the number type. The default is for general. If I highlight all the cells which have numbers and then right click, go down to format cells again, this time I will select the number tab and select currency. The default is to dollars with two decimal points. I'll press OK. Now you can see the numbers have been changed to dollars with a dollar sign, decimal point, and cents. Another point to make here is that if you ever see pound signs in place of a number, it means that the column is too narrow to properly display the numbers. To fix this, all we need to do is increase the width of the column as shown in an earlier part of the tutorial. Next, we'll add in some simple formulas. First, I want to add up all of my monthly expenses. First, I will click on the cell where I want the formula to be applied. Next, I will go up to the Formulas tab and then click on Insert Function. The first thing I will do is to select the function that I want in this case, I will use SUM. As you can see below, it gives a definition. SUM will add all the numbers in a range of cells. I'll click OK. Next, it will ask me to define the range of cells that I want the formula applied to. In this case, it is guessed B2 colon B7, which means B2 through B7, or B2, B3, B4, B5, etc. This is what I want, so I will press OK again. As before, I can apply this function to all the columns by clicking in the lower right corner and dragging across. Though it may look like all I've done is drag the number 1810 across, as you'll see, I've actually dragged the formula across. So if I change one of the values, for instance the July rent, we can see how the total expenses changes. I'll apply that rent change to all the months coming after July, and you'll see how the total expenses changes as well. Dragging numbers and functions across like that can sometimes mess up the grid lines, so I'll have to fix the grid lines outside of this column. As is common with Microsoft Excel, there are multiple redundant ways of adding formulas. Look at the formula bar here as I click on different cells. You'll see the number 85 shows up when I click on this cell. However, when I click on a cell with a formula, you'll see it written out, equals sum E2 through E7. 
So another way of entering formulas is just to type them out in the formula bar. So if I click on B10 and then click in the formula bar, I can type in my formula. In this case, I want to subtract my total expenses from my total income. To do that, I'll type in equals B9, which is the cell featuring total income, minus B8, which is the cell featuring total expenses. You can see these are color-coded. B9 is blue and B8 is green. Now press Enter. As before, I can just drag this across to apply this formula to all the other columns. And again, I will fix the outside grid line. The last topic that will be covered in this tutorial will be printing spreadsheets as well as exporting them to PowerPoint. To see what this spreadsheet would look like if it was printed, I'm going to go up to the upper left corner to the File tab, and from there I'm going to go down to Print. If I look on the right, it shows me a print preview, and as I can see, if I was to print this, it would be cut off after the month of July. So if I was to print this, it would show up on two separate pieces of paper. There are several ways for me to try to get this to print on one sheet of paper. First, I'll highlight all the columns, and then as we saw before, if I double-click between two of the columns, it will minimize all of them to the least width required. Now if I go to Print Preview, we'll see it cuts off after the month of August, so it will still print on two pages. After going to the print preview, you'll notice this dashed line shows up. This indicates the edge of a sheet of paper in portrait orientation. So if I go back to the file menu, and go to print preview, I can change the orientation to landscape. Now you see it cuts off between November and December. Another way to try to squeeze all of these columns into one page is to highlight all of the cells and change the font size from 11 to 10 and then minimize all the columns. Now you can see that the dashed line shows up outside of the final column, December. And I can go to Print Preview again to confirm this. It is easy to copy and paste this spreadsheet to PowerPoint by highlighting all the cells, right-click, copy, Then open PowerPoint, right click, and paste. Now let's look at the objectives that we covered in this tutorial. First we enter data into an Excel spreadsheet. Then we change the look of the spreadsheet. Next we employed simple formulas. And finally we prepared the spreadsheet for printing and display in programs such as PowerPoint. Click here for more resources to help you get started using Excel. There are also assignments that we've created to help you test your skills. You can also set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation, and you can also look in the Skillport modules available through your MyGW account in order to get more help using Excel.